Hi friends, welcome to UGCNet Online Pre Coaching. In already I have discussed December 2006 question number one to question number 30 in uh, first three parts. Today I will discuss question number part four question number 31 to 40. Uh, look at question number 31. Linking. There are four options. Linking cannot be performed performed before reallocation cannot be performed after reallocation can be performed both of before or after reallocation it is not required if reallocation is performed means uh, in compiler design uh, usually we'll ask question for 31 to 4, 35 linking load uh, linking and loading there are two concepts very important concepts here linking based on reallocation when it is uh, possible they ask the question first of all we will look at what is linking uh, and types of linking to execute an object program we need reallocation linking loading and allocation they, there are four options first of all what is reallocation which modifies the object program so that it can be loaded at an address different from the location originally specified means what reallocation can perform already it is if it is to so uh, stored in so, a source program somewhere memory location now we are reallocating uh, that same program in a some other memory location this is reallocation but linking linking which combines two or more separate object programs and supplies the information needed to allow references between them means what linking uh, actually the in uh, software there are no, so many models we need to link it uh, every model every functions we need to one function call another function we need to link it and this uh, this is exactly for form linking loading and location which allocates memory location and brings the object program into memory for then execution so actually in two pass linking loader first pass is assign the address to all external symbols second pass is perform the actual loading reallocation and linking these are the um, overview of compiler design okay uh, main system programming now go for linking cannot be performed before reallocation means what first you need to link it actually uh, actually linking is not performed after reallocation because first link then load it actually so uh, you can answer this question easily so option b is the right answer means what actually linking is not performed after reallocation first link it then reallocate reallocate it means what uh, it is not possible to after reallocation it's not possible to link it that's why the option b is a uh, cannot be performed after reallocation linking so uh, it's clear it's a very simple question but you should know the uh, basics of all these i hope you understood this one next we'll go for question number 32 which of the following is the most general pay structured grammar uh, this question is uh, related to uh, a finite automata and theory of computation uh, same question asked four to five times um, please it's very important question um first will what is which of the following is the most general pay structured grammar regular grammar context sensitive grammar context free grammar syntax tree actually uh, in these uh, syntax tree except syntax tree there are four uh, all are grammars uh, in language hierarchy of uh, chomsky hierarchy uh, first it will come unst unstructured grammar next one context sensitive then context free and regular actually type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 grammars this one they asked related to this one but we will ans answer this one the phase structured grammar is a quadruple means what set of v summation ps set of all symbols uh, sorry set of all uh, means uh, states set of all symbols productions and starting symbol this one this is same for context sensitive and also context pre grammar uh, but uh, regular grammar reads deterministic finite automata it is a five tuple quintuple set actually uh, but uh, context sensitive and context pre grammar is a four tuple set one is uh, 
set of all event nodes and set of all symbols used and p is the production and s is the starting symbol okay now look at a context sensitive is a formal grammar in which the left hand sides and right hand sides of any production rules may be surrounded by a context of terminal and non terminal symbols context sensitive grammars are more general than context free grammars in the sense that there is no that there are some languages that cannot be described by the context free grammars means what actually first step type zero grammar is unstructured grammar but context sensitive is a it is semi structured means what it is uh, uh, in between context free and unstructured grammar but unstructured also will not consider as a uh, means general phrase but uh, context sensitive is a semi structured grammar as compare context sensitive uh, means context free grammar context free grammar is a type 3 grammar that is more structured than context sensitive but uh, due to more structure it will not read uh, some of the grammars that is the drawback that's why here considered cannot be described by the context free grammars but can be described by context sensitive grammar in means what more general than context free grammar in sense that there are some languages that cannot be described by context free grammars but can be described by context sensitive grammar that's why it is more uh, structured than context sensitive context sensitive grammar are however less general in the sense that in the sense of the term then un unrestricted grammars that is context sensitive grammar occupy the intermediate position between context free and unstructured grammars in the chomsky hierarchy this is the types of uh, he is the famous mathematician chomsky normal forms i hope you who are studied it's famous he has classified all the grammars type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 grammars according to him the uh, means context sensitive grammar more and most general pay structured grammar so same question repeatedly asked please remember this point okay so option is b is the right answer now look at question number 33 a compiler for a high level language that runs on a one machine and produces code for a different machine is called optimization one pass compiler cross mul compiler multi pass compiler while looking at the question we can answer easily but anyhow we will go for one by one a compiler for a high level language that runs on a one machine and produces code for a different machine means what high level language it runs in a one machine and that object code runs in a different machine this is the overview but op optimizing here there is no question of optimization here you are not doing anything um, code reducing uh, reductions and also you are not uh, um, reducing time complexity so it is uh, it is not uh, relate to this one one pass compiler i hope it's not Uh, because uh, you are running one machine same object code you are running in a different machine so it is also not possible and multi pass compiler it is also not possible multi pass means what you, you are running one two three it is also not possible so definitely it is a cross compiler while looking at the answer but we will look at what is cross compiler cross compiler is a compiler capable of creating executable code for a platform other than one uh, other than the one on which the compiler compiler is running for example compiler that runs on a windows 7 pc but generates a code that runs on a android smartphone is a cross compiler this this is means cross compiler now this is the simple diagram uh, this is mac this is android this is windows then this is runs on a uh, this runs here but it's created uh, means um Uh, produce a code for a different machines this is exactly cross compiler i hope uh, uh, you understood now uh, you are writing one of the top most exams so please you go through it in depth 
for all concepts don't uh, suddenly you select uh, in any of the options so first you think and try to answer okay so i hope you understood this is option ac now look at question number 34 the k in lr r cannot be 0 1 2 this is also one of the um finite automata and uh, uh, means theory of competition question uh, means what will detail in depth uh, in detail the name lr is acronym is l means the parser reads input text in the direction of backing up the direction is typically left to right here Le l r means what here reading left to right this l stands for okay within the uh, left to right within each line uh, top to bottom across the line of the full input file is it clear this is l means what left to right this is true for most parsers then r means that parser produces a reversed rightmost derivation it does a bottom up parse actually left um, means left to right parser almost top down uh, but uh, right parser is a top um, bottom up parsing not a down a top down ll parse or ad hoc parse means ll parser is a top down parser actually the name lr is the open often followed by a numeric qualifier as in lr1 or sometimes lrk here one means what it readings one character uh, per step that's one indicates actually k means how many characters reading in a per step that is k indicates okay to avoid backtracking or guessing the lr parser is allowed to peek ahead at k look ahead means what k number of characters look ahead this meaning k means what okay so look ahead input symbols before deciding how to parse earlier symbols typically k is one and is not mentioned the name lr is often pre um, presided by other qualifier as in slr and lalr parser i hope it's uh, this um, question it's not easy to answer who are the first time or first uh, who are uh, don't know the theory of computation and compiler design because it's not other way to tell in a simple form without knowing basics of this subject please before looking this uh, um, video you just go through it uh, it's the Lynch or the Sritaramaya is a best good books good books for this subject uh, finite automata and compiler design it's a nice books just go through it then answer this one actually okay next one lr parser were invented by donald nuth he is the famous um, mathematician also he is a famous computer sci scientist uh, he got the first um, turin alan turin prize in 1965 as the F um, he, he got the first alan turin prize actually Alan, uh, Donald Nuth in 1965 as an efficient generalization of uh, precedence parsers, Nuth provided that LR parsers were the most general purpose parsers possible that would still be efficient in the worst cases. So LRK gram grammars can be efficiently pre parsed with an execution time uh, essentially proportional to the length of the string so for every k greater than or equal to one a language can be generated by an lrk grammar if and only if it is a deterministic means what context free if and only if it can be generated by an lr1 grammar so option sorry i think this is the b i think uh, it's the wrong so one b is the right answer i hope uh, it's uh, in depth in what is parsing i have explained in june uh, means previous videos please go through it what is parsing and uh, then come to know what is top down parsing what is bottom up parsing what is ll parsing what is lr parsing what is slr parsing what is lalr parsing 
so you should know the all basic things then uh, come to the definitely you'll get one question on based on this please go through it okay now look at question number 35 peer hole optimization is a form of loop to, loop optimization local optimization constant folding data flow analysis okay first of all uh, look at, uh, we should know the what is fee role optimization then we can answer this question okay in compiler theory fee role optimization is a kind of optimization performed over a small very small set of instructions in a segment of generated code so the set is called a fee role means what fee role optimization is kind of optimization performed over a small very small set of instructions in a segment of generated code this is fair hole this is also called as window it works by recognizing the sets of instructions that can be replaced by shorter or faster sets of instructions means what we can uh, exchange if it is longer uh, 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 strings we can replace it to small strings this is fair hole optimization okay now look at what are the common techniques applied in peer hole optimization these are the techniques we will apply in peer hole optimization first one is constant folding what is constant folding evaluate constant sub expressions in advance this is one of the um, means uh, form of fair hole optimization next one strength reduction replace slow operations with the faster uh, equivalents null sequences delete unless uh, sorry useless operations combine operations replace several operations with the one equivalent algebraic clause use algebraic clause to simplify or reorder instructions and special case instructions use instructions designed for a special operand cases address mode operations use address modes to simplify code these are the techniques we will use to reduce the code actually it's a simple form but uh, actually for our question point of view only constant folding is related but i have explained in uh, all the other optimization technique also because next time maybe uh, ans uh, maybe options are changed sometime they will give constant folding strength reduction null sequence all of these maybe so uh, please uh, while uh, solving the question you should go um, around about that question at least then we should uh, we can analyze same questions in a different angle okay i hope it's clear uh, if you have any queries anything just drop out your questions in uh, youtube comment box and you may reach out i have uh, displayed in the end of the slide every slide uh, complete my um, address so please go through it okay i hope you understood this question option c is the right of peer hole optimization is a form of constant folding is the one of the form of payroll optimization okay we'll go for next one an operating system is a collection of hardware components collection of input output devices obviously collection of software routines means what operating system definitely it is a collection of input output devices and also collection of software routines means if you select b and c definitely you need to select a uh, collection of hardware components so uh, there is no question it's a uh, uh, there is no way of other way of thinking i hope uh, directly you can answer this question sometime you'll get some questions like a bonus you, you got uh, directly all of these is the right answer okay look at question number 37 dash is one of preemptive scheduling al algorithm i hope this is the third uh, same question uh, repeats in third time this is question number 37 june 2006 same question here december 2006 same question repeated uh, in that i have explained in depth what is primitive what is non primitive and all anyhow we'll see one second because these are the very important questions it may be asked frequently the running task is interrupted for some times and resumed later when the priority task has finished its execution this is called primitive primitive means what once uh, it allocates all processes simultaneously uh, means memory location um, non primitive is a running task a task is executed till completion means what uh, once it is allocated to execution any process it should complete 
it should run up to completion of that process that is non preemptive but preemptive uh, if four process are running first for example one second for first process next it will allocate to next process i say uh, one second for second process one second for third process one second for fourth process then it's continue again uh, first process will give one more second this is exactly uh, round robin it will give it will allocate to, uh, time for all processes simultaneously equal amount of time that is called preemptive preemptive scheduling algorithm here look at the option shortest choppest obviously it is not because it is uh, once it is alloc allocate it once it starts execution in shortest chop it will complete then it will go to the next process so it is not so round robin obviously it's the right answer but anyhow we look at the other options priority based again um, uh, once it is high priority jobs enter into the uh, process it should wait until its process is completion so uh, that is also non preemptive preemptive and next one shortest job uh, job next that is also it is not so round robin scheduling is the best example of preemptive scheduling algorithm round robin. what is round robin uh, i hope you know already round robin is one of the simplest uh, scheduling algorithm for processing processes is an operating system the name of the algorithm comes from the round robin principle noun from other fields where each person takes an equal shares of something in terms that's why it is uh, best example of preemptive algorithm so option b is the right answer now look at question number 38 a software to create a job queue is called dash L uh, means linkage editor or interpreter and driver and spooler software to create a job queue is called obviously it is not linkage uh, linkage editor because it's not related to any editor so interpreter it's uh, you know uh, it task itself it is a different so driver and spooler only two concept but uh, i hope you, uh, without looking at the in depth you can answer but uh, look at what is spooler actually it is a straightforward question it is uh, if you know the answer spooler is the right answer what is spooler a grammar that controls spooling putting jobs on a queue Uh, spooling uh, spooler itself is uh, putting jobs on a queue and taking them off one at a time most operating system comes with one or more spoolers such as print spooler uh, for spooling documents in addition some applications include spoolers M many word processors for example include their own print spool spooler this is the small example of print spooler this creates a job queue means what you are giving two three pages printing uh, to different printing it will create uh, one um, a queue that is called spooling or spooler option d is a right answer now look at question number 39 permanent database of a general model of compiler is dash permanent database of a general model of compiler is identifier table page map table literal table terminal table okay now look at what are, oh, what are all the tables then we'll move to uh, question one second data structure and database require required source program now original source program which is scanned by the compiler as a as string of characters this is source program then terminal table at permanent database that has entry for each terminal symbol such as arithmetic operators keywords punctuation characters like uh, semicolon comma etc name of the uh, for example each field field name is name of the symbol this is terminal table now look at literal table this table is created during a lexical analysis phase of the compiler so it has to describe all literals in the program so these are the all the options now look at the question a permanent database of a general model of a compiler is definitely permanent this word itself what is your terminal table a permanent database that has entry for each terminal symbol such as arithmetic operation operators keywords punctuation characters such as this that's why the direct question if you know the answer you can answer in 30 seconds a permanent database of a general 
model of a compiler is terminal table not a literal table most of the time we will use literal table symbol table um, that's why we will answer directly literal table so uh, before answer please care uh, take care uh, reads one or twice okay uh, you take your own time don't answer in hurry okay so we'll look at question number 40 loading operating system from uh, from secondary memory to primary memory is called actually compiling obviously it's not uh, wrong and booting refreshing it's also wrong reassembling i think by looking at the question you can answer easily booting uh, because compiling it is not uh, uh, already it is in pro primary memory you are just compiling the program refreshing it is it is not uh, just you are uh, it's not a process of uh, store uh, means loading prime uh, secondary to primary memory reassembling it is also not uh, because all are irrelevant booting actually uh, once you turn on the computer or once you turn on the pc it first uh, whatever your operating system it is stored in secondary storage secondary memory once it is turn off once you turn on secondary storage to it will loads to primary storage that's why the process it is called booting okay now what is booting the computer usually uses its input output channels to access secondary storage and transfer the desired data using an intermediate area in the primary storage this process is called booting okay so option b is the right answer i hope uh, i i try to solve your all questions all queries uh, please uh, share the channel and subscribe it please inform your friends uh, if you have any queries just uh, drop your queries in youtube comment box thanks to all my viewers